If you have more than one piece of information that you would sort of like to keep together, um, one way you can do that is to use a 2D array. So in this example, um, there's an array and each row is being used to first store uh, the text that's going into these little divs here. So the food words that correspond to the colors. And then the second um, column of each row is being used to store the actual color to set the divs background to. So let's look at what that looks like. So the first thing is um, I need to set up my array that contains this information. And so I've called this array text uh, colors because that's the two things it's storing. And then to make it two-dimensional, it's very easy. Um, here's my outer set of square brackets. And then inside, I just have an additional set of square brackets for each row. Um, there's no reason to drop down to the next line like this. I just did that for clarity so you can see it kind of looks like the two-dimensional grid that it represents um, if you do this. So in the first column of each of these rows is the name of the food. Okay. And in the second column of each of these rows is the hex code for the color the background is going to be set to. Okay. Um, the first element in each row is always going to have index 0, so this is column 0, and the second element is going to have index 1, so this is column 1. If I were to draw this out as a little table, um, it would look like this, so my numbering would be, my rows would be 0 through 4, my columns would be 0 and 1, and here's where my items would be placed. Okay. So if I'm working with tomatoes, I know that this color goes along with it, and all I have to do to keep them together is keep in mind that they have the same row number. So let's see how that's used to build that little set of rainbow colors. Okay. Um, so I've got a function called cycle colors um, that I'm going to call when the page loads. Um, I've got a piece of an element on the page called B. It's probably a div. Um, it doesn't really matter what it is for our purposes, but I'm going to grab the element by ID. So I've got a hold of it in B here. Okay, I'm going to loop over the array. Um, my outer loop is corresponding to the rows. So here's my for loop. I'm starting my index at zero because that's the first row number. Um, I'm going up to the length of the sky so it can handle however many. If I add additional food items and colors later, it can still work. I'm counting up by one each time. I am actually um, dynamically creating some divs, and I want them to have separate IDs. So I'm going to concatenate a string and build a little div ID. Um, by putting the letter D plus the index of this outer one. So it'll be like D0 for the first row, D1 for the second row, etc. cetera. Um, and then I'm grabbing my bs.innerHTML. I'm writing plus equals so I don't lose what was already inside there. I'm going to concatenate or build onto it as I go. And then I'm actually writing the tag in. I'm writing div ID equals this thing, which I just created. It's going to be D0, D1, D2, etc. as the loop goes. Inside the div, I'm putting a paragraph, and inside the paragraph, I am grabbing the row, column zero, to grab the text that represents the food word, because that's the first thing in each row, and I'm putting that in between my p tags, and I'm closing off that div. Okay. My next step is to um, grab the div I just created, so I'm going to store that in D. I'm going to say document, get on it by ID, div ID which I had just assigned this guy, so it should have the same value in there still. And then I'm going to set the background of that thing by saying d.style.backgroundcolor equals. And here I access from my array again, text colors, index. This is still the same as it was up here, so whatever goes with that food word, the correct color is here. And then I want to grab the color word from the second column, which has index 1. Okay, So this is going to go through my full array, grab out the name, and then grab out the color and create a bunch of divs on the page all in one little loop for me.